Waz and I made it to space, but that's just the beginning. We now need to explore the galaxy and make our factory interplanetary. Our goal is to beat Space Exploration plus Crastorio 2 before Space Age releases and time isn't on our side. Will we make it or will this save file be a mark of shame on my hard drive for the rest of time? Welcome to a race against time and space. Don't let me leave, Merv! <laughs> Welcome to number seven. Last time we got our first rocket shipment from space, and this time we hope to expand our capabilities. Plastic and sulfur from planet Morrigan are filling in some deep gaps that our factory has been aching for, and our crude oil can now be used for other things. What? Oh, yeah, we're still getting trolled by these damn meteors. 66 hours in, not sure what pace we're on, but looking pretty huge on the map. Not quite a mega base, but certainly nothing to sneeze at. Accumulatorville finished building, ending our reign of blackouts, and we're now 100% solar, only burning coal to get rid of the excess from the core miner. Back to those meteors, they will be no more with these massive meteor defense turrets. They protect your whole planet, and with around four of them, we'll never have to deal with a meteor again. Just need to make their ammo from green chips, steel, and batteries, and we're completely protected. Yo, what's going on? What's up? It's been a actually really relaxing day. Now I'm gonna make some dinner and hang out. Are y'all factorizing? Yes. To progress science, we need to get cryonite and planet brain. Nora catches my eye first. It has tons of cryonite and only 7% threat. Problem is, solar is only 38% effective here, which sounds bad, and I'm too lazy to verify that the number is significant, so it's significant. This is what we should have done with Morrigan. Scan the planet and verify that Krynite is there before literally packing 50% of our workforce into a rocket and launching it there. Hindsight and all that, I guess. But boy, does it have Krynite. It also has cryonite core mining, which is a massively bloated production process with two steps and 13 outputs, but core mining is infinite, so technically this planet has infinite cryonite too. I really like the process of scanning a planet. Each one has strengths and weaknesses. This one has a lot of great essentials, some that not even Navis has, but I haven't seen any iron, so if we choose to go to this planet, we'll need to plan to bring our own. Iron is particularly bad to be lacking in right now because it means the planet will also lack steel and without iron and steel you're missing quite a lot of everything. Taking a look at the planet view we can see that Brain Nora is 4 space rings away from Navis. I assume that this means the rocket fuel cost is a lot higher to get there, I mean it looks really far away. It took a bit of getting used to, but I like this view now. The visual distance everything has meshes a lot better than a list in my head. This view also makes it really easy to click on a planet for some summary statistics about said planet. It reveals how this mod is constructed. Each planet contains a random mix of several pieces needed for the giant puzzle we're building. None of the planets have everything, and beyond the mix of resources, you need to consider levels for threat. Solar efficiency, whether or not it has water, and even biter meteors, which are basically the worst thing I have heard of so far. I also like the look of Crystallis. It's the biggest planet in its ring and has a lot of goodies. Unfortunately, there are a lot of biters, even at just 33% threat, and it only has 22% solar efficiency, which I think is the worst I've seen so far. There are some super expensive items that are really annoying to try to add to the main belt, and this requester chest is underutilized, so I'm going to abuse its large perimeter as much as I can. I'm going to see if I can squeeze in cargo rocket silos, landing pads, core miners, signal transmitters, and signal receivers. With the sulfur getting shipped in from Morrigan, it's much easier to automate productivity module 2s, which I am a big fan of. I spaghetti over to the red chips, which conveniently have the same recipe as prod mod 1s, then sulfur is all that's needed for the module 2s.
We no longer need to collect biter goob for military science as we can grow our own. Just add petroleum and oxygen in a biolab. I'll still need to convert this into biter research data than actual military science, but at least we no longer need to violate OSHA by feeding biter goop by hand. I can't research it yet, but I hover longingly on my favorite research in the game, Logistic System. I'll go into more detail on why it's great when we can actually have Cryonite and can research it, but right now I'm just staring at it like a bear staring at a salmon. In the process of thinking about which planet I'm going to, I've started loading up this rocket with all the essentials. Some might say... Girthy? In other news, I found a Cryonite planet. The one that we found already? There's a few. So this one only has 7% threat. It's Brainora. We scanned it. When I look at the solar system view... Yeah. It's one ring out but we can still launch a rocket to it. It just takes more fuel. Based. Yeah, setting your place up to like launch rockets automatically would be sweet. I was trying to think about how to set this up. I mean, the way you have it right now, all you have to do is like bring over rocket fuel, turn it into liquid rocket fuel, bring over the cargo sections. And you could have like in case like a non-packed section gets in, you can also have like a backup filter inserter yep. that grabs them and every rocket that gets sent has a has a capsule in it so the rocket that comes to provide the cargo will have at least one probably should contain more paste okay i have a signal hooked up for morgan research resource storage that should send in the amount of raw yeah rocket fuel solid rocket fuel cargo rocket sections and pods i think it should be sending the signal i don't see any items in there oh i see them on the pad yeah, you can see them like highlight when you hover over. So yeah, they are hooked up and then the thing seems to be also hooked up to the signal transmitter. So I don't think, I don't know if you can read that on your same planet, but I'll test to see if I can get that signal. I, I am transmitting out Morgan resources, so then you can figure out what needs to be sent with that. I just want to know what signal am I going to be looking at that's calling for resources here. So what signal should I fire a rocket with? And do I need to do specifically plastic or sulfur based on how much you call? No, no, I have the, I have that sorted out here. So um, the landing pad can handle both. Yes, but if we have like a lot of sulfur and no plastic, do we want to make it just load up plastic? Yeah, that, that might be interesting. So you could be listening for a signal that tells you how much plastic and sulfur we have and then take the difference of that and fill the rocket based on that difference. Yeah, that's going to need some circuit knowledge on my end that I don't have, but I'm willing to learn. I think you just need, because I already figured that out for the moon, so. Okay, do you just want to hook up like a signal so I can play around with it then? See if I can figure out how to load that. I'll, I'll put down a sender, put down a receiver as well to get your signal. So this will be research, this will be... Well, the receiver should probably go by wherever the rockets being launched right oh yeah you're right okay so yeah so for now i'll just try and send this so i'll call this like like morgan landing pad you can just do morgan morgan resource request okay so i see 19k plastic and that's it yep that is correct the sulfur has all been used and the plastic okay is just sitting on a train stop so then i am going to Oh, jeez. This is math. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to assume a full rocket is 90k. I can fit a little bit more than that in there. So I would subtract... Man, this is... Um, I'm, I'm cooking with gas here, okay? I can tell you how to do it. That helps. I, I want to try and figure it out, and then if I okay. get angry enough, then I'll ask you. <laughs> okay, all right. Okay, so do I multiply by negative one in the arithmetic combinator to get the amount that I want? Yeah, that's exactly what I do. I'm just trying to think of how I can split this, or at least have one resource not take priority over another resource, if they're both empty. That's interesting. Yeah, I haven't actually directly solved that, but I know there are certainly ways to do it. Okay, so I have one named Morgan Welfare Pad, and the other one's named Morgan Rocket Parts Pad. All right, it'll only run the core miner if we have 10% charge on the accumulator. So I have 19K coming from red, 90K coming from green, and then the constant combinator multiplying that by negative one, and the red output is negative 109. Oh no, that is, yeah, that is what I want. 
Okay, yeah, this this works. This works, kind of. Oh no! No 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 no! Stop! 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 Ah, that's not what I want. Oh fuck! So that doesn't work. Um, the brain is not braining goodly here. Okay. Do you want to pop over here and see if my logic makes any fucking sense? Yeah. Anyone who remembers Waz absolutely dunking on me with train knowledge in part two should have figured that I was out for revenge. Well, here it is. Not really. I've done a lot with circuits, so I feel pretty comfortable double checking what he did. To simplify everything, this station will load plastic and sulfur until the total in the rocket and on Navi's total 100k for each resource respectively. Then it will launch when it's full. This way, one rocket can supply two different resources with real-time rates. Whether we need 70k plastic and 30k sulfur, or 100k sulfur and 100k plastic, or anything in between, this rocket will always launch with a full inventory and never overload the landing pad. With all the crude oil, this planet can even supply its own rocket fuel. There is one missing piece here though. The 100 cargo rocket sections and one space capsule needed for every launch. We might have enough to make those just with the resources on more again, but it is such an enormously long process requiring almost every raw resource, every type of circuits, like 20 or more crafting steps. It is much easier to just send a rocket with cargo parts for now and space capsules that are made on another planet. Only took 40 minutes. Teach a man to fish though, always happy to strengthen the crew. Just put you in an ICBM. Rocket sections must be um, reusable because you didn't put any rocket sections in, but I got like 27 out of it, which is kind of cool. Yes, they are rocket reusability. If you click on the, the silo, it'll tell you how much you've got. It's also a little monk s because that means I need a little bit more storage for those. And once we get requester chests, then this isn't really a problem at all. All right, well, this is good because now my productivity module twos will keep going. Yeah, the one thing about the Cryonite planet is that it's 38% solar, which is, like, not great. Nope. No. Yo, yo. What are we doing? What are we gooching? Factory gaming. feel bad about the uh, 20,000 terabytes on my computer, so we delete that <laughs> with the chainsaw every, just, like, every year, and then... Uh... Got a new computer after that, oh, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Our copper smelting reserves have run out, and it's time to unleash the enriched copper ore. Ooh. Accidentally picked up a lot of sand and I could have put it in the box myself, but just look at this. It's so much better Our audio is just random nonsense What up? Hey. The Bussinator. Bussinator. That song comes up on my workout playlist. The, the Bussinator? No, no, to awaken. Are you guys getting a lot of white noise for me? Yeah, you just sound a little boxy. I'm in a, I'm in my truck. Based? Oh, uh, based? If I'm not able to defeat my little brother in a board game, I get angry. I get uh, extremely upset. <laughs> Particle accelerators are on Earth to open portals to, to heaven and hell. The hottest take of the evening. Damn. <laughs> Can you add a signal to the landing pad that is just like, this landing pad is empty and send it to me just so I never launch a rocket if there's not enough room? I think that the rocket automatically will not launch if there is not room. Here, let me, I think we can test it. I can just shove a bunch of shit into the thing. Okay, now if you go to the rocket, how much shit is in it? Uh, it's full. Okay, can you launch? Like, do, what does the button to launch say? Okay, waiting for the... Okay, so it will not auto-launch, but I can fire it off manually. Okay, cool. All right, well, I'm coming home. What, are you guys rich now? You just launching rockets left and right? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Are you sitting on my plane for a reason? What? You were you're right on top of my plane and I couldn't click it. I thought you were just tro trolling me. So, next planet. It's Brainora. Brainora. All right. That is a Cryonite planet. And it's only 7% threat, so it should be easy. Ooh, there's a couple 100% threats. Those are exciting. There's a 7.3 or 6.3 mil Cryonite mine and it's kind of in the middle looking at juicily. I've also been loading up a rocket with stuff. Oh, a Vorion is a zero threat Cryonite planet. Uh, does it actually have Cryonite? Let's find out. 
Ready for lag. A V O R I O N. Yes, there's a fat cryonite, 6.6 .6 mil. Oh. Well, that might just be better. Uh, do we need water to machine cryonite is the question, because it doesn't have water. I was thinking of just sending raw cryonite back. It would be easiest. Oh, no, it needs steam, but it produces water. Two or three cryonite byproducts, so I thought it would be easiest to just do it here. All right. Yeah, we could do that. Just send everything in and then mine it and send it back type thing. Just raw. Yeah, I can set that up. Are there any other enemies other than the ankle biters? Not yet. Not that we know of. There there might be in the expansion. We don't know. Are they in the mod? I don't know. There's no new enemies in the mod. Just varying levels of fuck tons of biters. One thing I don't know is if the atmospheric condenser, it can condense water. So I'm thinking if we go to waterless planets, we can condense water there. So we could just do all the cryonite processing that we need to. Yeah, I, I think it's just easiest to send it back raw. Like it's like it's a nice option. If there's stuff there that we want to make that requires cryonite, that'd be nice. Okay. Yeah, I have a rocket ready. I was going to launch pretty soon. There's I don't know if I'm missing anything in this rocket. I should look at the stats for Avorion, though, what, to see what it actually has, what I might be missing when I go there. Uh, not a lot of iron, very little stone, like negative stone, but core miner should provide you enough stone that it's not a big issue. Uh, you said little iron as well? Yeah, bring about three times as many solar panels as you think you need, because the, the solar is solar pretty sucks. shit. Yeah, it's 22%. Bring, like, some boilers. Is there coal on the planet? Yeah, coal's second highest after cryonite. So should be plenty of coal. And there's a seven seven hundred thirty k right next to the place. And if you just bring water fill, water fill, you can just cheat. That feels oh. like cheating. Yeah, I mean, we could just not use water fill on other on waterless planets. That might be. Yeah, and just use atmospheric good. condensers to do it. Dude, I can't wait to make a bot mall for all the random fucking garbage. <laughs> I'm so excited. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna go see what needs to be done for logistics science. Like the logistics data, whatever the fuck. The process is very like convoluted. I think the first step of the data cards should be made on Navis, but the rest have to be done in science. Like you have to make, make a data card, then make a raw data card, then it's a polished data card, then it's a data substrate, then it's a machine learning data, then you can turn it into science. So it's just a shit ton of steps and most of them have to be done in space yeah we can make rough data substrate and everything else is in space yeah i think th i believe that's how it works so where you made the life support i'm making cargo pads cargo rockets core mining drills signal transmitters and signal receivers so if you want to use those to go to a, a different planet that'll probably help kickstart that process uh one thing i want to kind of try is setting up I, I wanted to get cold liquefaction going up in space since we can do that in the biochem facility because then we don't need to fuck around with oil and sending like lube or oil up we can just send coal that'd be interesting all right well i I can go to Hephaestus if you want to go to Avorion. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I can get you a silo. Or, or you can just reuse the same one I'm using. It's fine, too. I should actually put a pad down here just in preparation for it for when I come back, just in case you're not here. Is there a place you want it? Not really. I mean, there's plenty of room down here. I don't know how much shenanigans we're going to have to do to process Cryonite, but if you just put on a train, we can bring it wherever. I was just going to put a cargo landing pad down somewhere Do we have pads being made or are they just kind of yes yeah they're up there where the life support are being made there's a bunch of really expensive shit that gets made here that's more convenient there's rocket silos core mining drills priced on a bike jesus christ mate yeah can't wait till we can get more requester chests welcome back hey. what i'm just uh said hey hey a little quiet hey hey i'm fat albert hey, hey, hey. Uh, I wonder if it ever makes sense to bring raw iron so you can productivity module it when you get to the planet. I think needing to melt it is the issue. Yeah, it's right. It's just a it's a ratio. Certainly, like the more iron you send, the better it gets. And also, we should start using industrial furnaces. Oh, one of the like 60,000 new things that I didn't even see we had. Or casting machines. I'll start using this shit when we have a bot mall. Okay. Casting machine i've never used the casting machines i don't know how that works i'm certain it's more efficient somehow because it's 
24 enriched iron and 10 pyroflux make molten iron and then we can put that molten iron into a casting machine to make an iron ingot and then we can make iron plates out of that iron ingot so that's goes from 24 enriched iron to 30 iron plates versus five ore for five plates so it is significantly better but it, t it takes pyroflux which kind of sucks I don't know. You can directly make steel ingots from molten iron, which is pretty good. 24 enriched iron goes into like 20 steel plates versus 15 iron plates into five steel plates. That seems really good if my brain is mathing right, which probably isn't. Okay, well, I found a way to fit them in over here. So we are making industrial furnaces. Whenever you say I found a way to fit them in, I get like a shiver of dread go down my spine. I mean, but it's working. Uh, all hail the flying spaghetti monster, I guess. All right, some new buildings to utilize, which is exciting, but I'll leave that to Waz for now. I've got a new planet to go to. I know I've already been in a rocket and I've been to space, but it's a little different going to another planet, especially one that needs over 100,000 liquid rocket fuel to get to. The only way to space capsule back is to use emergency burn, which will destroy one half of my inventory, so the return journey will need to be in an actual cargo rocket. This planet is also way too far away to be delivery cannon, so if I'm missing something, I'll need to get crafty. A quick look at the planet makes it look like a cold, barren hellscape. It's fitting for cryo night. We'll need to go somewhere that looks like this anyway, but even with no biters, it's a little unsettling. But there's no time for hesitation. We need to get the resource and I'm willing to give what it takes to send some pay dirt back home. Can I get a hell yeah, boys? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. H H H K. Okay, this is fine. We knew the rocket would crash. Just got to start setting things up. All right, first is solar. I'm not exactly sure why I was so anxious. There's no biters. I don't even need life support here. It's just really far away. And having no water doesn't help. Oh yeah, it turns out blueprints made in satellite view are not accessible in your inventory, so I need to paste this blueprint in satellite view. A little unintuitive. This solar blueprint is a little goofy because solar is so much less effective here, throwing off the accumulator to solar panel ratio. It would have been better to pack more solar in, but I definitely was thinking of a hundred other things. Fuck, dude. Any day now. Even this small number of bots can't be sustained by all the solar I've put down so far. I'm gonna need to keep building until they can start to charge and build it themselves. Blossom my ass. Yeah. Gotta keep that crack clean. Jesus Christ, man. My brother. L plus ratio. Three. Oh, God damn it, Bobby. Oh, man. I ate probably about a thousand calories of it in about a minute. <laughs> Yo. What's up? Y'all out here recording things. I'm just taking over a planet. I'm on planet cryonite. You're on Krypton. You still got me super. You know that song? No. If I'm alive, then where will you be there? Holding my hand. I've heard that. That's the chorus. Na, 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 na. Uh, it's a little different. It's uh. Oh. Na na. Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's all I know. I much prefer. I'm no Superman. Ooh, ee, ooh, ee, ooh. 
Thong's kind of sus. NGO. I'm no Superman. Yeah, Scrubs kind of sucks. NGO. <laughs> Damn. I can't downvote you, but I would if I could. I mean, it's a sitcom. Yeah, and sitcoms suck. Hmm. You know, uh, hmm. Hmm. Parks and Rec. The Good Place. 30 Rock. Seinfeld. Fuck Seinfeld. Everybody hates Chris. Uh. George Lopez. The Low. Right. Do. <laughs> He's a little higher. Welcome to the Low Rider Podcast. This is your host, <laughs> George Lopez. My, my work on the George Lopez Podcast is separate it's... from my <laughs> acting career on the George Lopez Show. <laughs> it's just called George Lopez. See, that shit's sus as hell. That's pretty it's sus. Just, just a dude's fucking name. What about Psych? Psych sucked. Damn. Maybe you just don't like sitcoms then. Yeah, I, 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 think, that, I think that's it. All right, simple enough. Miner 2's Mining Cryonite with productivity modules should be good enough for the first launch. We can maybe tweak things later if we need to. I'll need more power, though. Productivity modules make this very electrically expensive. Huh. Cryonite only stacks to 20. Eh. Huh. Oh, I wonder if it's worth processing there then. Yeah, this changes things. You should see mm. what each of the different products stack, because I know we need rods for the science, but I don't know what the other ones are going to be used for. Well, shit, I didn't bring an industrial furnace. Did you bring an atmospheric condenser? I think I have literally one. Do you want to see if you can siphon water from the atmosphere on the waterless planets? I'm assuming you can. That would be good to double check before I bring a shit ton of them to Hephaestus. Oh my god. Oh my god. Uh, so this planet is just nitrogen and oxygen from the atmosphere condenser. Okay, so we cannot get water. Apparently. And this is Avorion. This went from quick adventure, 20 minutes in and out, to the literal plot of Interstellar in like one second. Cryonite stacking to 20 is awful. That's 10 times less than most other resources. This would have been good to know before coming here. In addition, there is no water. Why is this a big deal? Because making cryonite rods, which are the end product and stacked to 200 like normal resources, require water. You know what else requires water? Rocket fuel. Not directly, but you can either make it with pyroflux, which is not on this planet, or from light oil and solid fuel. In order to make light oil and solid fuel, you need to refine it, which, yep, needs water. To create water chemically, you need to combine oxygen and hydrogen. I can air condense oxygen, but I couldn't find a single recipe available to me that has a byproduct of hydrogen, so that's out. You can also make water from water ice, which we don't have and also is not found in the orbit around Avorion, even if we could go to space. You can also turn steam into water, but every land-based recipe that makes steam requires water to begin with. We have tons of mineral water, but for some goddamn reason, you can't take the minerals out and make water. Like, how hard is it to remove the minerals? Just drink it and piss it out. Anything, the water is right there. I can't tell you how long I stared at recipes neurotically searching for some way to make water. I exhausted every single path, except the core miner. Now, Keep your pants on, this isn't your normal core mining, this is cryonite core mining, which is more complicated than the already insane core mining process on Navis. Oh, you can crush a burner inserter into inserter parts, that's fucking hilarious. You can crush any inserter into just inserter parts. Cryonite cores are pulverized into cryonite stone and have a lower chance for core fragments. These normal core fragments can then be processed like normal into their 10 byproducts, one of which is water. But we're not quite saved. I don't have any industrial furnaces, which are needed to make the cryonite rods. Thankfully, I came up with a compromise. It's still much worse than sending cryonite rods, but the intermediate step in the cryonite process turns cryonite into cryonite powder. This stacks to 50, which is two and a half times more than raw cryonite. It's still only 25% as efficient as sending the cryonite rods, but it's making the best of what we have. 
go for a walk and like eat a steak and stop being a bitch. Cryonite powder also produces sand, which can be compressed into landfill at 200 sand per landfill, so I'm not worrying about it filling up anytime soon. I'm also going to make glass because it's convenient and I might need it here in the future. Oh yeah, literally Harvey Dent. I also planned on training around all the excess from the core miner, but my factory takes up barely any space. There's nowhere to even train to. Hell yeah. I need these bitches to be a pound of pop. The Riddler, Joker. The Diddler. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> they just fucking beat them to death with a tungsten cube. <laughs> what the fuck? And now I do something I will slowly come to regret. All that precious water I'm core mining will go toward oil processing to make solid fuel and rocket fuel. Sounds pretty good, right? Well, it's fine, but that night I went to bed and theorycrafted in my head. The amount of water needed to make cryonite rods is lower than what is needed to make oil and it refunds some of the water. This means that I can make many more rods with the water than I can solid and rocket fuel. Cryonite rods being four times more efficient to transport means that I would only actually need to make a quarter of the rocket fuel to transport the same amount of resources. This use of water is so much more efficient, but I prefer doing it this way. I didn't look up a guide on the best planet to land on or the most efficient way to transport cryonite, I just took the information the game gave me and did the best I could. My analysis was highly imperfect, I didn't even think about water needed in the cryonite processing chain, but I made some imperfect improvisations and found a way to make it work. It could be more efficient, but for me, it's so much more fun and memorable this way. It takes a lot for a game to make me draw on a mental whiteboard while I'm laying in bed. Also, if something in game, anything, would have told me that Cryonite only stacks to 20, I wouldn't have planned to send Rock Cryonite back in the first place. Nothing is ever my fault, and I'm perfect. Moving on. Absolute dog shit. This is the first time I've had to unload a rocket. Looks kind of goofy seeing an inserter pointing out of the silo. Even more goofy is how slow these things are. Our power is really weak. I would do some steam boiling, but steam needs water and uh, yeah, you know the drill. Water is insane. It's either free and does everything and you throw offshore pumps around like candy, or you have zero of it and just cry. Maybe that's why it's called cryonite. Cool. I set up some copper mining and smelting on this planet and sort of realized, like, why? I only need a little bit, it's not like it's going anywhere, plus can I really afford the constant draw of 30 more Minor Mark IIs? It's kind of silly. A local warehouse. Oh, you want a local copper warehouse, okay, yeah, can you explain yourself? No? You just like orange? Okay, yeah, cool, great. Absolute asshole. He's not getting up. <laughs> well, you know what they say, if you can't make steam, burn coal instead. It actually pumps out more electricity than you might think, and I don't give a shit about this coal patch. It would have been better to turn the coal into processed fuel beforehand, but this planet is the epitome of apathy. Oh fuck! No! I also turned the trace amounts of pyroflux the core miner generates into rocket fuel. Ain't much, but it's honest work. I pumped some of the planet's oil, but there isn't really much point. Without water, it's almost useless. Another possibility I theorycrafted was burning the raw crude oil in a gas station to generate power. It's a little nicer than coal because it doesn't run out, but I didn't think of that in the moment. I, I get that, man. It's like when I make stuff water working, it's like no one's ever gonna see this, but I know the imperfection is there, so it bothers me. Critical intel. The cryonite powder stacks to 50, so... Sending powder back. Yes. I was trying to see if you could like extract something from the mineral water and get water back and the answer is no. So I don't actually need water here. I've been using, I've been just burning coal. So basically I don't actually need water. All I need is rocket fuel to get the shit back. I don't have enough rocket fuel to send a rocket back yet. I was like super focused on like setting up oil and setting up this and setting up that. And then I was like, wait a 
a minute. All I need is, like, I just need rocket fuel, and then we can worry about that shit in the future. Yeah, we should probably start doing lithium processing at some point, because the battery, upgraded batteries might be good. But dude, I made hash. You made what? Hash browns, sausage, and eggs. I used, like, all the butter. Ugh. Oh, Waterfill doesn't even work on water planets because it's just oh, no, cool. no water. I, I see you trying to scam there. I, I had to test it. I'm a... Uh-huh. I'm a scientist. Uh-huh. Mr. Cheater. My lack of rocket fuel means I'm stranded. This is literally interstellar. And just like Matthew McConaughey, I need to find a way to communicate across time and space. Marv! Marv! And then I had an idea. I could blueprint belts to move rocket fuel over to a rocket silo in the satellite view on Navis and wait for the bots to build it. Thank God we made an extensive bot network. Watching the rocket fuel move one belt at a time was thrilling, like solving a puzzle in The Witness. The final boss was spaghettiing some inserters to bring a space capsule over to the silo. The creator of this mod may not have told me how high Crynite stacks, but they sure did bless us with amazing tools. And that's our first completely remote launch. Should be more than enough rocket fuel and cargo parts to get my ass off this hellscape and back to Navis with the coveted blue powder. That's That stuff's trashy. I, I would agree. What are, what are you degenerates up to? I had to configure a rocket completely from orbit, which was exhilarating. I'm also going to load the trace amounts of uranium and rare metals that the core miner produces because these are still very valuable back on Navis. Yeah, yeah, people. Yeah, model. People. Where did you guys originally find that? It's been around for a long time. You've just been sitting on that for a long time, huh? Yeah, no one's triggered it with the right keywords before. I've been sitting dormant in my mind for like the last 20 years. Speaking of um, NASA people, I was having an idea. I had a, I had a clue. That's a first. NASA people. NASA people. Speaking of uh, NASA people. We're coming home. You have no idea how good it felt to be back, to have access to all the resources again, not worrying about power or setting up a train network to be able to take a bath with all the water we have, Christ. Most of all, I'm excited to continue down the path of utility science by making cryonite rods. It requires turning one half of the powder into cryonite crystals, then baking the crystals and powder together, which can only be done in an industrial furnace. I'm happy to be using the industrial furnace with its five module slots, you know this is going to get productivity to hell. But gone are the days of slap a resource into a furnace and walk away. Now we have to give our resources a massage before they feel like being useful. Aside from just extra steps, the challenge here is to turn exactly one half of the powder into crystals. If you turn too much into crystals, then you're out of powder and can't make the rods. Our train stops already logistically connect warehouses together by default, so thankfully there is a simple solution of turning off a belt going into a warehouse for crystals if the amount of crystals in the warehouse is equal to the amount of powder at the train unload. Oh, five oh. rod twos. Ugh. Oh, how much power is this gonna take? Oh, that's a good question. Um, oof, two megawatts each. I feel like I should push that wall out, but I'm... I don't want to do it. I think we have quite a lot of space. And no, just to contain the pollution cloud so we don't get biter attacks anymore. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Free cubes. Whistle. all give so much time to run a bakery. Whistle. Wood. Wood.
All right, I'm gonna work on rough substrate. Sweet. I will probably start thinking about how to actually use them in space now that we have the rods. The rods, Mason. What do they mean? I'm tempted to start using the furnaces for like our iron and copper, but I'm like, man, I think our iron and copper, they're, they're doing great as they are. All right, so I need to set up that little uh, rough substrate build. Shouldn't be too hard, except for all the random scrap it produces. How, how, mu how, how much do you want me to overbuild this? As a science product, it's interesting because once it gets used, it becomes recycled. I'm going to do it. Can't stop you. I mean, you can. You could probably kick me from the server. I mean, I've uh, relinquished my, my rights to do that. This is a democratic server. Oh. We got a train out of juice. I guess I should go fill up the train. Ha uh ha. -huh. Oh, did we get one on this planet? Oh, I'm fucking so dumb. Not gonna argue. Maybe I should kick you. Well, oh, you've wedged this in very tight. I can, I can get it, but it is wedged and it is wedged well, but not wedged well enough. I can still pull it out. Ha -ha. We have 800,000 mineral water, which is enough to back up the core miner. Well, we finally have a use for it. The long process of making lithium. It also needs chlorine and hydrogen, so I'm going to produce it near the rocket fuel so we don't have to duplicate these processes. 80 hours in here. So with the power outage, we're actually a few more hours than that. Oh, did it slow down the tick rate or something? Well, so it just doesn't run when the power's out. Three days, 11 hours, 46 minutes and 50 seconds. 72 plus 11, closer to 83 or 84 hours, I think. Too much. Not enough. What are you gonna do when you're done? Good question. Just know that Sauce Man's always cooking. Now that I've gotten sidetracked like eight times, I can go back to making stuff. Okay, so how let's let's see what what is the the tech path for this rough substrate so we got a rough substrate cosmic water chemical gel blank data card machine learning data and then we can do utility science okay and then we get junk data cards from that which we can recycle into blank data cards so we probably don't need that much rough data storage yeah i feel like a red belt for any research is like yellow science definitely is not at one red belt but it's totally fine okay we do still need all the tech cards darn Have you checked on the uranium recently? Uh, no. It's the thing that comes out of the core miner at the lowest frequency, I think. I thought we had a little bit of it. We have 36. We could start doing Covarex when we get it. Lovely. We probably shouldn't use it and just put more down more solar because it's so UPS intensive and we're probably going to need the UPS later on. There's a rail that will not accept a train stop. Uh, you probably have a signal on it that goes the wrong direction, so it won't. Put it on the direction you want. Yeah, I think you're right. Of course I'm right. The train thing. I know all the train things. That is cheating. 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 You next one of my train stations for the the substrate. Big sad. Absolute cheaters. This guy sounds like my average commenter. That's right. You thought I couldn't gaslight you. Well, I can. Get fucking wrecked. Sad. Now I know how bullshit things can be. They're like, we're looking for criminals. I just point at everybody else. being recorded yes yes will my call recording be used to improve the customer service experience no no good good okay Ligma. Who's steve jobs to be a little more specific about the lithium making process you mix solids liquids and gases together 
Hell yeah. Beans! Dude, speaking of beans, so I, I opened my can of black and red beans for the new week, you know, to put on my meal prep. And I figured out that I didn't have any Tupperware containers to store them in that were clean. So I took a mason jar out of my pantry and I put both cans of beans in the mason jar and closed it and then shook them up to distribute them. And then I was left with a can of beans in uh, a mason jar full of beans and beans juice, bean juice. And I, I thought of you. And that's lithium. Uh, no use for it. It's just going to pile up here. What's going out of business? Your mom. Fuck. Well, <laughs> saw your latest video, sauce man. How's it feel to get lube shot at you all day? That's good. Croissant. I just went back and <clears throat> watched the first episode. And I can't get over the fucking. You're describing me, and you go, "He was about as helpful as Lacroix is flavored." <laughs> the maximum fucking <laughs> dunkage, dude. I can't even lie. That's pretty good. I'm not even mad. Get peaked. Yeah, no, it's dude. Yeah. But I just gotta say skibbity toilet more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wait, are you back on your home planet already? Yeah, we're done with space. That was that's all there was. You 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 go to the moon and it's fake. Yeah. <laughs> it turns out it was fake. <laughs> you know, this lake was nice and all, but we need a parking lot. A parking lot for trains, that is. We're going to launch Olympic swimming pools full of resources into space, so I want to ease the burden on our bots. I wish we could make the rods on that planet. We could. You have to like rock it in water. I mean, that's the trade off of having no hazard is there's no water. Yeah, 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 for sure. Going to that other planet might have made more sense because we could have obliterated the biters easily. And in, in Fanny has biter meteors though, which might be an issue. That might be worse. <laughs> if not shot down. So if we just put a shit ton of the, the planet-wide ones on there, could work. Oh, hey, we can turn Vulcanite into Pyroflux. So yeah, do we want to go to Infami instead? Amazing. Let's view the surface and see what's there. Flag time. Got iron and... Yeah, this looks like it's all going to be moon tile. Yeah, so I think Infami is probably the best bet. And then we just produce it here. If we can make steel circuits and batteries here, which if we can do that, then we can completely guard it from meteors. Ooh, it has copper. Okay, that means, and then it also has oil. If we can make the ammo here on this planet, then we just send four turrets and it's no threat. We, we need more than four turrets. They're not 100% chance. They have 80% accuracy. I don't even see any biters here, dude. Definitely go here instead of to Festus. Gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah, so tomorrow or next time we end up playing, I think either you or I should go start setting up Vulcanite and the other person should work on the, the science. Dealer's choice? You're you're the boss. I'll probably end up doing science. I think it is what I set up originally, so it's kind of a little bit of like, you don't have to deal with my code. Uh, that is bigly. I think was really excited about the prospect of being on a planet that I can't touch. That's, that's kind of true. So I think we get the best of both worlds there. All right, works for me. Oh, you should uncap all of the solar and accumulators. I want all the solar panels. Well, you heard the man. New resources and more space science next time.